Hi, my name is Peter Walker and I'm a counselor and clinical supervisor. I'm reflecting today on a couple of uh, points regarding hope and I've named this hope and metaphor um, which uh, maybe is more of an honest title to reflect a type of vague uh, theoretical vantage point on this. Um, I'm trying to pinpoint uh, perhaps a one aspect of the nature of hope as we experience it and work in it and through it in uh, this earthly life and uh, leave it there perhaps for you to ponder more. Um, this uh, uh, in, in a way related to this notion, I suppose, hope, what popped into my head as well was this uh, miracle question, which you might be familiar with, uh, which is a tool used in solution-focused brief therapy, uh, SFBT, which is attributed, uh, the founders really uh, regarding SFBT, it's attributed to a couple, uh, Steve DeShazer and Kim uh, Inso, uh, Berg uh, from the Brief Therapy Family Center, Milwaukee, USA. Another name associated with that uh, solution-focused therapy is uh, uh, Erickson uh, Milton uh, in the 1950s. Um, but there's a question, a tool used in solution-focused brief therapy called the miracle question, which when working with clients uh, very simplistically uh, is to facilitate clients in envisioning uh, their situation, maybe their future, uh, without the problem uh, that they have identified in their life that's even brought them into therapy. So if it was drug use and abuse or dependence, um, what would their life now or slightly down the road look like if they were to wake up one morning and that problem in their life was gone and all of its branches, as it were, everything that it impacts in your life were also gone, what would your life look like? Uh, and then the purpose of the miracle question really is to help capture a vision uh, so as to work towards that direction. Uh, the Proverbs say, uh, without a vision, the people fail. So it's to help create a vision, go forward. That just... Uh, came up in my mind as I pondered this notion of hope. Let me give you another little scenario that launches us maybe deeper into where I'm coming from on hope and uh, metaphorical attributes of hope in this life. So uh, think of your ideal life, maybe uh, your ideal picture, uh, it, maybe it's a family unit and everything is great and uh, life is good, uh, wealth, health, and uh, Maybe you're with your loved one and uh, if you imagine this, you're, you're thinking and feeling like life is good. You look at each other and you say, life is good. But then you think, well, you know, really honestly, even if we're experiencing a measure of, of um, peace and joy right now, life isn't good for everyone. So here, imagine this, so, so this maybe, let's say it's a loving husband and he says, look, life isn't great for everyone, although we're tasting this experience of goodness which engenders a certain hope in us about life. Life is good. You've seen the stickers. Uh, it, life isn't good for everyone. I, I, I want to go work to help other people experience a measure of hope, a measure of goodness. Um, kind of like we're experiencing right now, which causes us to buy the bumper sticker. Um, and what does that actually do? When you feel like life is good, what, what's actually happening? Usually it's, it's engendering, there's a spark of light, there's a sense of hope, hope almost for the unknown, hope down the road, so hope and light kind of breaking in on darkness. So life is good, we taste it like this in our life, gives us a sense of hope generally, but not everyone has this. So I'm going to put my things aside. I'm going to go work for those in suffering in other places and spaces and situations uh, so as to help improve 
their situation so that they can experience a measure of reprieve, of um, release, and thereby maybe a, some hope, uh, whatever this hope is, hope will break in to their experience as well. So I, I, uh, life is good, it gives me a sense of hope. I wanna go create some improvement in people's lives so that they experience a sense of hope. Um, then if you back up the camera, that, that, that's a very worthy uh, vision, conviction, purpose, drive, but um, what's really going on there, if, if, if we zoom the camera out a little bit and, and analyze carefully, um, there's almost a pursuit, the pursuit is of hope, a sense of hope, not so much in what exactly is achieved in in the in the interim uh, the, the 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 objective is really to experience taste and be filled with hope um so you know you go to uh, a country uh, poverty stricken to build a playground in an orphanage um which is wonderful um but when all is said and done, what was accomplished is so much greater than the playground. The playground and all the effort, all the time, the sacrifice, the planning, the work, the sweat on your brow that goes into it is so much more than what is left on the ground of that country and on the ground of that orphanage, which is a playground. It is a, um, a signal and a communication. It is an expression uh, that is life affirming we are coming to do this because we believe not that a playground is gonna um, fix all your pain but because this expression this act is what we believe in the flow of a river of light and truth and life affirming dynamic uh, that says uh, there is hope so um, Bouncing back to the title, hope and metaphor, uh, I suppose what I'm tabling is that much of what we do and accomplish in life is really uh, to catch a glimpse of and to validate, to endorse, to put our hands in on the common cause of humanity that says um, life is good and we want to move towards that which is life affirming. So there's much practically accomplished, but what is more so going on is almost this metaphorical direction of hope, um, which is a which is a whole other discussion to dig into the essences of that which then um, how does one lay claim to hope itself and connect the eternal to the temporal rather than just try to express it and um, touch it and taste it practically but largely metaphorically how does one actually um, come to um, come to experience the fulfillment of the ages uh, uh, living waters that flow from within uh, John 7 37 to 38 uh, we'll leave it there